Welcome, time for some art fun. Today we've got a little unbox and swatch session, so stick around and you'll even see a full painting. A little while ago I was tagged in a post referencing Emily Grace Palettes on Instagram. She was doing a giveaway and someone tagged me, as I often do get tagged in those types of giveaways, you know, if they say like, oh, tag three people and you'll have an entry, things like that. People tag me all the time and I welcome that. That's totally fine. <laughs> Please use my name if it helps you get your entry in there. I'm never offended by that or bothered. But in being tagged, I actually saw her watercolors and thought, oh my gosh, this Etsy watercolor seller has a beautiful stuff. And so I ordered her Harry Potter shifter series with shifting and sparkly colors. And this is the package that I got. And she sent stickers and the beautiful thank you card and a care card and all kinds of stuff. And I got four quarter pans of the different colors and they have magnets on the bottom. So I was able to shove all four along the side of a very small watercolor palette, and then I used it in this video to make a piece. She also had another Etsy shop make this swatch card for her, and these are the four colors that it comes with, basilisk, common room, dillyweed or gillyweed, <laughs> and um, uh, divination. And that's her Emily Grace palettes, that's her business card. So I definitely, was sucked in to buying something again. And I know I recently did a video about how I need to stop buying things. And I'm gonna really talk about that a lot in this video because both of these packages you're seeing here are what I would kind of call peer pressure buys. <laughs> and I don't regret them at all. There is a place for peer pressure, especially in the art community. I feel like it's such a thing. Often used for good, we discover new awesome art supplies. This package here is from Jackson's. So one is from a specialty handmade watercolor seller on Etsy, Emily Grace Palettes, and this one is from Jackson's um, based on the sale that they had. And that sale I heard about here on YouTube in the comments, um, in the community section, not the comment section. So on both Colorfully Optimistic and on Sketches and Scrubs community pages, I saw the link to the Jackson's sale. I'm sure I also saw it on Natasha Newton. I'm sure I also saw it on Moni D Major. <laughs> um, but I saw it enough that I was like, well, you know, I just watched a Stephanie Davis video where she talked about Viridian, especially Schmincke Viridian being a key component to making your own super granulating watercolors. And I love super granulating watercolors. <laughs> so I decided to get Viridian and lo and behold, poor me, I just had to get a bunch of other tubes because I wanted the free shipping. So I got the Tundra Violet. I had recently gotten the half pan of this in a prior sale to try and I loved it so much I know I need the full tube and that's what a lot of these are. But I really love that color and I definitely wanted that tube especially on sale. So I got three more tubes. One of course is going to be the Viridian but let's see what else I got. <laughs> Oh, I love the Jackson's packaging. So this one, and I kept like struggling where this um, camera was. This is the transparent yellow. I'm out of New Gamboge and out of just a somewhat warmer yellow. So that's going to be my standard yellow when I need to refill. I got my Viridian, the one thing I was going for, <laughs> the one thing I was supposed to be shopping for. And then finally, I got that beautiful Glacier Green, another one from my small half pan haul where I was like, I'm not going to be able to live without a full tube of this. I need it in my life. So this is my full haul and I'm going to take you upstairs to the studio to swatch. I also got these two free swatch size dot cards from Emily Grace when I bought the four half pan or quarter pan palette. I wanted to do a swatch of these new colors, really focusing on the Emily Grace colors because the other ones you've really seen before. I already did half pans uh, testing for those and they're on a bunch of channels, so I didn't end up swatching the Schmincke colors, but I did want to swatch these because I've never seen these before and I think they're so pretty. So the one thing I did notice is I loved the magnets on the bottom. She only wrote the color on the side of two of them, so I actually wasn't sure what the other two were. I just guessed. And <laughs> they are so pretty. They're like over full. They're bulging, which is awesome. So they are really, really pretty colors. These are also, by the way, new brushes that I got from the Chelsea Paper Company that you're going to see in this video. I got those based on seeing them in Natasha Newton's videos for months and months and months and just being obsessed. They do have synthetic um brush they're synthetic brushes and so they don't have any animal fur animal anything in them and i did like that plus they're just so pretty so i have wanted them for a long time 
I went ahead and got them. So this video really is about that concept of just how, no matter how many times I say, like, I really need to cut back, I need to stop buying art supplies every month, except for February, which was a no art supply buy month. Look how beautiful. Look how gorgeous. Um, I still buy art supplies. The one thing I'll note too about this particular set is this uh, swatch sheet that she had made actually by a specialty shop that designed it for her, another seller on Etsy. Um, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's waterproof ink that they used. And so it does sort of look a little dirtier when I do the swatches on the swatch sheet versus in my Etcher Lab sketchbook. So this is the Etcher Lab paper and I am going to make a piece right next to these swatches because I don't love using a whole page just for swatches. <laughs> it kind of hurts my heart with how expensive the Etcher sketchbook is. I want to make art on every page, but sometimes I do do swatches and I love making swatches. So I've been thinking a lot about this concept and frankly I've been seeing a lot of people on ArtTube struggling with this, struggling with art hauls and buying art supplies and showing the art supplies we buy and we all get the comments a lot of positive comments saying wow that's beautiful oh i love that i need to go get that and that's great because we all love art supplies but we also get a sprinkling of those comments of like oh i wish i could get more or i'm really trying to stop getting more these art hauls are really a struggle for me because i love seeing the pretty new fancy art supplies but i'm really trying not to buy anything and i feel that whole range of just like push and pull constantly. And I had like a three hour paint and hang session on Zoom with my friend over at Sketches and Scrubs, love her. And we were painting and talking and this came up and we had a long talk about it. And then I saw a video from Miranda Watson at Al Alkali Creek Art and she was talking about it, that she just feels overwhelmed by how many supplies she has in her studio. And she wants to use some stuff up before she buys some more stuff, but she just struggles because people send her stuff and she'll want to buy something and try something. And we just love art supplies, guys. Like we love them. That's a huge thing that we bond about here on ArtTube. So there's a huge place for it. But I also think it's just so healthy for us as a really wonderful community, this beautiful community that we have here in ArtTube, to talk about these things that we're struggling with. And if I see this many people talking about it, and I know I've talked about it on and off numerous times, and then Sketches and I are talking about it, it's just all over the place. Moni D. Major's recent art haul and swatches, she talks about like, okay, I've gone way overboard, I shouldn't be buying anything else. <laughs> And if we're all talking and thinking that way, you all must be thinking that way too. And I want to have a place for you to chat about this, like in the comments below and just generally with each other, if you all are hanging out down there. So I took down a few notes just to kind of talk about the different concepts that I've been thinking about with this and look how gorgeous these colors are. So this is just the swatches, just pictures of the swatches in different lights. You can see how gorgeous they shift. They are indeed shifting colors. And so they really inspired me to do a series of magic potion bottles just from my head. I didn't look at any reference. I just made a bunch of shapes, tried to make a composition that was pleasing to the eye and then just dove in, didn't make any decisions past just this, that this is what I was going to paint. And then I just dove in. I really didn't think it through and just, I like how it ended up, but just, there was no planning guys. There was zero planning. So I have thought about how wonderful that feeling is of the excitement of deciding you're going to buy something, going online, looking for the right thing, or going to your local art shop and picking something out. And that rush of having a new art supply and all the excitement and fun and dreaminess of like, what am I going to make with this? What fun am I going to have with this art supply? And everything that goes with that, watching reviews and getting pumped up and checking your tracking and seeing when it's going to get there. And then with that, for me, the companion guilt over buying new stuff when I know I have art supplies that I should be using and I know I have art supplies I love and the concept of like need doesn't really apply in any way, shape or form to me with art supplies. I, for some reason, I would never just go buy more yoga pants because I love buying yoga pants. I would only go buy a new pair if my old pair or one of my old pairs start having holes in the crotch or something. That's when I go buy new pants. It's when my whole, there start to be holes in the seams. But with art supplies, it's like never enough. And then there's the fear of missing out where I see someone on YouTube or I see someone on Instagram with like this palette with just this like gorgeous palette. All I can think is like, oh, I want that palette. I don't have that exact same thing in my house. Do I have things that I could use as a dupe? Of course, but maybe that's a totally different special thing. And I get that FOMO and I have a fear of missing out. I want to go try that thing. And then in 
companion to that is that hesitancy to use the supplies you have because you're worried you're going to run out or you're worried using them is a waste. I mean, how many times have all of us felt that, said that? I see it in my comments. I see it on Sketch's comments. I see it on Moni's comments. I see it in Miranda's comments. Like, all of us get those comments. And we all feel that way too. We all struggle to use our supplies because you do. You feel like this piece right here, I love how this came out. I think it's super cute, but it wasn't planned. It's not going on anyone's wall. It's in my sketchbook on the back side of a page. Could I feel like I was wasting these beautiful, precious, quarter pans of a special edition of an Etsy one-off batch you know what I mean like small batch Etsy creator with handmade watercolors um yes I could totally and that's the setup by the way I shoved them all in the corner there in this little palette but I'm blocking that out because I know that's such a, a sad way to think because then you won't use your art supplies for what they're for which is making art but I feel it I feel that way and I know you feel me too and then finally as a youtuber there's a whole other element which is haul videos hands down get like by far the most traffic. I don't know what's up and if the algorithm has some sort of a shopping bent and they're happy to encourage people to shop and there's some kind of a copacetic relationship there or if it's just that's what people are interested in. So that's what people click on and the algorithm knows people will click on it. So that's what they push. But like Moni D Major, her, she has like a almost 40,000 view art haul and she was at maybe 800 subscribers right before that art haul. And now she's at over 3,000 from that one video. And I have to tell you, I love that video, but that is not my favorite video of Moni's. I was obsessed with Moni D Major's channel and a huge fan of hers from her first video about like doing Ghibli scenes in her sketchbook. And let alone, forget it, with her acryl gouache comparison videos. I'm obsessed with those. But probably my number one favorite is her most recent paint along video. It's not really a paint along, but she's painting and she talks about her process from start to finish. I'm obsessed with that video. I've watched that like 10 times. So what I'm interested in, YouTube doesn't really reflect that back that everyone shares that kind of an interest. Instead, it's telling all of us creators, people want hauls, they wanna see you buy stuff, they wanna see you unbox stuff, they wanna see art supplies, new art supplies. And that gets in your head. I mean, we love you. Art creators on YouTube love our audience. We have such a sweet, wonderful, generous, giving, friendly, supportive, complimentary, just amazing, amazing community on ArtTube. I seriously don't know anything like it. We all talk about it all the time, creators, how wonderful we have it and how great you are. And we want to give you what you want, guys. Like, we want to give you what you want. Give the people what they want. And if we're being told, like, yeah, I mean, do an art haul video, get 30,000 views and 3,000 new subscribers or whatever, or do another paint along and get 100 views and you know, one subscriber. It's not that that's not my favorite kind of video to make. It is. But I worry if it's not your kind of favorite video to watch. And that matters. That matters to us. So I just think it's a conversation we should start chit-chatting about because it's, it's prevalent enough that we should really get into it. I want to hear what you think. I really feel vulnerable putting this out because it's such a mishmash of thoughts. But I know I'm safe here because this is such a safe, happy, wonderful, beautiful community. If you enjoyed this video, remember to check if you're subscribed. If you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe. Drop me a like. It really does help with that algorithm we're talking about. <laughs> and leave me a comment. Seriously, and also enjoy this video of my baby Tuffy. He's so stinking cute. I love this video of him, so I thought I had to share. Um, <laughs> so adorable with his little bunny carrot. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Have you seen this theme and other art YouTubers videos? Are you feeling this way in your own personal life? And what do you think we could do? Like what ideas do you have for what we might be able to do better or differently so that everyone's super happy and this is the happiest place on earth right here in the art tube community? Because I know that's how I feel. And that was my husband's hand, by the way. Um, I know that's how I feel, but I want to know how you feel. So leave me a comment. I can't wait to read them and I'll talk to you soon. Until next time, remember, create something cute.